Hi and welcome to this tutorial for my Gerbera Daisy crochet pattern. This flower is very close to my heart because it is also known as a Transvaal Daisy or a Barberton Daisy and it was my wedding flower and um, hence my Instagram handle Barberton Daisy. Now it's a simplified version it doesn't have all the floofy bits you usually get in the middle on a Gerbera but I will show you on the website how to incorporate beading and or surface crochet there just to make it a bit more fancy. Those instructions will be on the website where I've shared the written only pattern with charts by the talented Masaku Kawahara from Crochet Mmm. Crochet Mmm. I like that name. Um, but for this we're just going to do the video and I've got my four millimeter Clover More crochet hook. I am using Yarnsmith's Pebble Haze DK in the colors Titanite for the green and Yellow Amber for the yellow. You can make these in many different colors, of course. If you made them in white, they could be, uh, is it leucanthemum? I don't know how to say it, but a crazy daisy, basically, although crazy daisies are very crazy. The flower is not flat on the back because it's meant to go on my Lucy wall bouquet, uh, as I did with the oxide daisy and with a thistle. But at some point I will show you how to just flatten that out, add a stem so you can make some three-dimensional flowers but not now we're doing the wall bouquet first. You will also need some stitch markers. I'm just using some plastic ones. You will need those to mark some front loops when you're making the green base so that you can work into them when you're making the yellow petals. Now, have I forgotten anything? If I have, I'll put it in the description below. Well, let's get started. Once you have all your supplies, we are gonna start with the base part of the flower. And we're going to do that in green. Consists of four rounds and in some of those, well in all of those rounds really except for the last one, I'm going to ask you to mark specific front loop onlys with a stitch marker. If you don't do that then it's going to get very tricky to work into those front loops later on when you're making the petals. So to start I'm going to start with a double magic ring. You can start with a single magic ring if you prefer. You can also start with a chain four and just join to the first chain with a slip stitch if you really prefer and then work into that ring. So we're going to chain one, that's not going to count as a stitch here and throughout. Then we're going to make nine half double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, And nine. Once you've made all the half double crochets we're going to close the ring and if you're doing a double magic ring you tend to pull on the end then see which one moves pulls that one and then close. So I'm going to join to the back loop only of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch so you will see that that's the front loop, that's the back loop. So if I join to the back loop only with a slip stitch, it's going to pull that front loop a bit tight. So I'm just going to put a stitch marker in that front loop. So when I go to join the petals, it'll be easy to find. For round two, I'm going to chain one again, still doesn't count as a stitch, and I'm going to make a back loop only HDC in each stitch around. So that is number one, back loop only, half double crochet, Back loop only half double crochet in the next stitch. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And nine. Right, so that brings me back to the slip stitch. And I know that's the slip stitch because it's got this little leg there and it's also got the chain one where I started right there. So I'm going to join to the back loop only of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And again, I'm going to mark that front loop 
so it doesn't escape or become hidden. For round three, we're going to chain one and make two back loop half double crochets in each stitch around. So in that first same hole, two half double crochets in the back loop only. Two in the next stitch, so that's three, four. We're going to end up with 18. I like counting in twos. Five, six in the back loop only. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. They stretch a bit, don't worry about that. Seventeen and eighteen. So that brings us back to the slip stitch, the chain one, and I'm going to join to the back loop only of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. And again, I'm gonna mark that front loop only so I can find it later. So now we're in the last round, we're still making back, back loop only stitches. Chain one, we're gonna make two back loop only half double crochets in the first stitch. And then one back loop only half double crochet in the next stitch. So that's the first one, we're gonna do that nine times. So that's the second repeat. Two back loop only HDCs in the next stitch, one back loop only HDC in the next stitch. So that's the second repeat, I'll just continue around. Three, Six. Seven. Eight. And the last repeat, number nine. That brings us back to the slip stitch, the chain one, and we are gonna join through both loops of the first half double crochet with a slip stitch. You can make a little chain if you want to, to fasten off, and then I'm gonna cut my yarn and pull that all the way through. So that will give you this weird little hat shaped thing like a fried green egg and we are going to attach our pat petals to this base part working into all those front loop onies so that we can make our flower this one's not blocked it opens up beautifully when it's blocked now we're going to add the petals and when making them as i said you are going to work into the front loop onies um of each stitch and you will also work into the front loop only of the slip stitch join it just makes it neater the jump between rounds if you miss a petal or two no one is going to know this should be fun-ish not stressful so don't worry too much about that round one of the petals you will make each petal exactly the same way so in round one we're going to make 10 of them one in each of the nine stitches one in the front loop only of the slip stitch join and we are going to start by joining our yarn to that first marked front loop only round one and we're going to make a slip stitch you don't have to start with a knot already on your hook i prefer to to make a petal we're going to chain six one two three four five and six we're going to skip the first two chains and into the third chain from the hook we're going to make a single crochet 
Then we're going to make a half double crochet into the next chain. I'm working into one loop only. You can work into two if you prefer, or the back pump. I prefer this way. So that's two half double crochets and then a single crochet in the last chain. We'll slip stitch into that same front loop only. And that's our first lonely petal made. For the second petal, we're going to do the same slip stitch into the next front loop only. It forms a dotted line, so it should be easy to find. One, two, three, four, five, six chains. Skip the first two chains into the third chain from the hook, make a single crochet, half double crochet in the next chain, half double crochet in the next chain, single crochet in the next chain, and then slip stitch into that same front loop only. Looks like a little Easter bonnet hat. <laughs> Slip stitch in the next front loop only. One, two, three, four, five, six chains. Single crochet in the third chain from the hook. Half double crochet in the next chain. Half double crochet in the next chain. Single crochet in the next chain. I'll keep doing that. Feel free to crochet along with me as I do three okay Hey buddy, you gonna come lie down with me? Do not steal my yarn. Don't do it. Oh, that's a big sigh. You alright? Puts? Puts, you alright? Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the nine petals made into the front loop only of all the stitches and that will bring you to the slip stitch which you can see there. So into the front loop only of that slip stitch and you'll find it between the stitch marker and the last stitch you made. So into the front loop only of that slip stitch we're going to make our last petal of this round. OK, 
Okay, so that is round one made. So to continue with round two, we're going to make a petal in the first marked slip stitch of round two. Don't fly. And then we are going to continue around making a petal in each of the remaining eight front loop onlys of this round and into the front loop only of that slip stitch. So you're going to make another 10 petals. And then for round three, we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to start in this first marked and we're going to make a petal in each of the 18 stitches around which will bring us up to that point and then we're going to make one in the front loop only of that slip stitch so i will see you when i've made everything except that very last petal <laughs> so i am ready to make that last petal in the last stitch before the slip stitch i have marked the first petal of rows one and two with a stitch marker that's purely so I can double check the pattern like I said no one's going to know if you have a one or two less also this is quite a floofy thing at the minute so you'll be amazed at the difference it makes after blocking so I'm going to make that last petal in the last stitch lying very comfortably on my foot comfortable for him not comfortable for me and then the very very last petal which you can skip if you want to into the front loop only of that slip stitch Now at this point you can fasten off and work away your ends before you block. I cannot work away my ends because I have lost my very favourite yarn needle and it's the only one I use. So I'm going to attempt to use something else but it's going to go, it's too big and it's going to go horribly wrong. So I'm not going to do that on video but I'm going to work away all my ends. I'll do that, I'll, this one I just thread in through there to the back work it away, work these two away at the back and then I work this one through to the back as well and just work it away because this will ultimately be attached to the way I've done this. It'll be attached to um, the bouquet anyway so that's all going to be hidden. So here it is all blocked. Look at that. It's got a nice bit of movement to it. So you can fluff it up a bit. And once you put it into the bouquet, if you're going to make a bouquet with it, it does curl up a little bit again, but not as much as it did at the start. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you again. Bye. I've changed my mind. I think I'm going to do this demonstration in the video as well. So this is where I'll be adding some beading to get you that floofy bit. Now, if you hear ambient sound, that is my 12 year old playing Fortnite or something with his friends. I apologize. So I have used one of these beading needles to thread 30 beads onto my yarn and that I'm using a size six Toho bead. Debbie Abrams beads will work as well. And I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm using a smaller hook for this one. You can still use the four millimeter hook, but I just prefer to use a smaller hook because it's easy to get into those slip stitches. So I'm using a three, two, five, clever or more hook. 
right so to add these beads it's going to start in we're going to work into the first slip stitch of each petal so it's that the straight one the second slip stitch will make a little downward thing like that so we're going to start in the first one and i'm working from bottom to top and straight away i'm going to take three of the beads thread them towards my work and then i'm just going to make a slip stitch that catches those three beads make one slip stitch and then into I'm going to skip this downward slip stitch into the first slip stitch of the next petal bottom to top again inserting my hook loading three beads and then making a slip stitch to catch those three beads and then a chain one did I say slip stitch before I meant a chain one sorry bottom to top into the first where is it first slip stitch of the next petal load three beads complete the slip stitch to catch those beads and make a chain one Ooh. and I will continue around that's a bit messy I will continue around doing that in each of the ten petals of round one so I'll do that one more time slip stitch into the first slip stitch of the next petal or well, insert your hook, load three beads and then complete the slip stitch and then chain one. Right, so I'll continue like that and when I get to the end I'll show you how I finish off. When you've worked into each of those ten petals you're going to join to the first slip stitch with a slip stitch and it's a bit fiddly so you'll have to sort of find where that first one went in. It doesn't matter too much if it's a bit Weird, I'm just going to move this to the front, make a slip stitch. I'm just going to work these away to the back. And then I'll work them away when I find my proper needle. So that's the beaded one all done. quite like it actually a little bit of gold bling if you don't have any beads and you would just like to add some floof with yarn and a bit of surface crochet um, you can do that as well I'm using my smaller hook again three to five that's just because it's easier to get into those slip stitches got a slip knot already on my hook and same as with the beaded ones we're going to work into that first slip stitch of the petal first petal and we're going to make a slip stitch chain three slip stitch into the first stitch of the next petal chain three slip stitch into the first stitch of the next petal chain three I'm going to do that all the way around and that will just give you a little bit of texture there I think I may prefer this more than the beads. Slip stitch into the first slip stitch of the next petal, chain three. Slip stitch in the first stitch of the next petal, chain three. slip stitching into the last the first slip stitch of the last petal and then I'm going just going to make a slip stitch into the first stitch of the first petal there we go first slip stitch of the first petal okay we 
go and straighten it out a bit. So that gives you a little bit of a ruffled edge. I'm going to work these away as well. Oh, at least to the back. Because I still don't have my needle. I know. I'm harping on about that needle, but I'm I'm quite sentimental about my tools. There we go. So that is your Gerbera Daisy, your Barberton Daisy with a little bit of surface crochet floof. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.